Hello everyone, live on video here at the After Chat. It's been a long time. It's been almost over a year of negotiations with Bolin Enterprises to get Kenny Bolin back here on OneWrestling.com and OneWrestlingVideo.com. But finally, some of the paperwork has been taken care of. We've Cross the T's, dotted the I's, don't you love cliches? And uh, now brought to you by Bolin Enterprises, Kenny Bolin, welcome back to the After Chat. All that big buildup and you couldn't even get in my official name as it appears on my birth certificate, Kenny Starmaker Bolin. Uh, I know that down down the uh, down the line here. I was because I, that is part of the. Uh, hold on. That is part of this. That does sound. That looks like official paperwork you got there. Well, it is. It's Kenny Starmaker Bolin. This is. Uh, this is what, what is the name of that lawyer you have working for you? Uh, the name of my lawyer? Yeah, the the one who signed this thing. I can't even read it. It looks like chicken scratch. Yeah, I go through the firm Dewey Cheatham and Howe. Ah, that's uh, the old Three Stooges uh, firm. I use their attorneys. You do. You do. Well, welcome back. It's been a long time, and uh, I'm, I'm so very glad to see you. And we're recording this on uh, January 1st, 2018. And before, it's another thing on here, before we get into uh, what we have planned, your predictions mm-hmm. for the world of pro wrestling or beyond for 2018, uh, it says here that you have uh, mm-hmm. a lot of merchandise that... Uh, is available to your millions of fans out there. Would you care to uh, give us a merchandise tour? Oh, you want a merchandise tour already? Well, well of course, everyone knows my well, book. Well, it says uh, that I have to do it here. You've advertised my book for me before on previous shows from a couple of years ago. I love that book. We've grown by leaps and bounds. That's why it's been so hard for us to sign a deal. Have you noticed how much cleaner our images are now? I have you? I've gone from a $600 a month apartment to a $1.7 million home. Wow. That Oh, it's these old uh, uh, historic homes over on Cherokee Road, one of the most uh, prestigious addresses in all of Louisville, Kentucky. And I now live here thanks to the podcast world. Well, I was going to ask, where, where does the income come from? To where does the income get a home like that? You're starting to get a little nosy over there, aren't you? Well, well oh. only because I, I, I'm not even in a so, quarter of that. The bowling club, the, the BS Fitties. The hat, can you see? You can't even probably see the hat there. We got the, we got the new bowling club hat. We have the new BS hat, which gets delivered to my home tomorrow. The Bowling Services Classic logo hat will be out. My book, of course, we got, oh, my God, have you seen these? The Bowling Club Monster in Tune headphones. These bad boys list for $199. We're selling those for only $79. The hats are $19.95. The book has been lowered to $19.95 due to finally eclipsing the 10,000 books sold mark in two and a half years. Wow. Lower the price. How's your book selling, by the way? That's doing really, really well. Is, so, wrestle, is wrestling fixed? Have you sold 10,000? Yeah, oh, more than that. But is, well, is, is wrestling fixed? I guess, I guess I'm, I'm trying to catch up with it. I didn't know it was broke. I'm, I'm, thank you. Okay. <laughs> it just took a few. It just took a few shots. Well, it, it, it's, it's uh, the morning after New Year's Eve. so. Yes, we were all up drinking. Well, not me, because I'm a teetotaler. But I did have a little eggnog. Did you, wait, wait, where did you celebrate New Year's Eve? Right here, uh, my family hung out with me till midnight, and then the prince had to go do security at a, at a local university here in uh, Louisville. So his uh, his wife and uh, sister went with him. I stayed here with the dogs. I watched New Year's Rock and Eve. Uh, no wonder with Dick Clark. Uh, Dick Clark was watching from elsewhere. Yeah, right. Uh, who was the the uh, uh, the person that sang? Uh, um, uh, oh, wait a minute. That was a different channel. The guy that sang Imagine. But what did you think of Britney Spears? Britney looked good, man. Yeah. 40-something years old, maybe pushing 50. Yeah. I'm seven. Brittany's got to be in my ballpark somewhere. But well, she was looking good and uh, performing well. I, I uh, love the Imagine I, Dragons. I thought they were incredible. Yeah, fantastic. And Mariah Carey, always looking good as always usual. Look. Now, who is that other singer on there? K- Kalia? Is is that his Kal- name? Yeah. And there, Wiz Khalifa or Kalia? Yeah, whatever it was, he was very impressive to me. I really liked him. Khalifa, I think. I, I, I haven't watched the whole show yet. I had to record it 
And because uh, I was still watching NFL football yesterday, watching all the playoffs. Well, what did you did you uh, make a New Year's resolution? Not well. The first resolution I made, and tell me what you think of this. I put this on Twitter today, and I keep looking back and forth, fans, because I have a sixty-inch computer screen here to my right, to where I look and see Bill in, in outstanding high-definition imagery <laughs> had before. And I think I'm looking pretty good according to the picture I've got. I, I might be looking better than I've ever looked in my life. And the uh, camera's right here. So when you see me looking here, I'm looking at Bill. <clears throat> and then when I talk to the people, I'm looking over here at my camera. So just to explain to you why I'm going back and forth. But no, I made a resolution that irritated me yesterday. And this is what I'm going to start doing. And I hope the people and I hope Mr. After help me out on this. Anybody that I see on Twitter with more than 10,000 followers, and they're verified, like me, and I'm sure Mr. After is. Actually, actually, let me stop you there. I have 22,000 Twitter followers, and I'm still not verified. I have. You know, I got verified at under 5,000. Wow. Why or how? The fans demanded it. They kept writing Twitter and saying, why isn't Mr. Boland verified? And I woke up one day, and I had the check mark. Uh, Jimmy Cornette told me that you had to pay $440 to get verified. And so he knew damn well I never paid it, and, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I never paid it. Just the fans kept writing Twitter and demanding it, and I woke up one day and I was verified. And then, and it gives you a little bit of status, and, and, and I might be one of the lowest followed people to get, uh, other than what WWE buys, because the minute they get their talent, they buy the verification mark for them. I didn't know that. No one bought mine, I can promise you that. I ain't got a fan out there to pay 440 bucks for me to be verified, like they give a damn. I've even had people try to buy my verification status on both Facebook and uh, and Twitter because they want to take over my account and then put in all their information and make it look like they were the ones that are verified. And I've been offered up to two thousand dollars for both both accounts. I could make four grand wow. if I sell my verification, but I didn't want to do it. So, so the resolution actually is the resol. Oh, the resolution. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say 1080p. I'm sitting here looking at you. You know what 1080p is. Yes. yes. Look, the New Year's resolution, not the video resolution. No, no, the, 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 the New Year's resolution. Resolution we is. Uh, thanks for getting me back on track. That's all right. Who has 10,000 followers or more, which you're one, and is verified, and we'll work on that. I'll, I'll get a hold of my people. I like that. And if, you, and if you follow less than 50 people, you are a pretentious a-hole, and Bill's told me that I can't use the language I use on the bowling alley. Yeah. You're a pretentious a-hole, and I will block you. Follow your fans. That's why I'm so popular. That's why I sell so much merchandise. That's why I'm so beloved on six out of the seven continents. I'm working on Antarctica, but those people are hard to reach. So, no, come on, man. Follow your fans. It may people right little old oh, Kenny. I agree, Kenny. That it is so. And by the way. Uh, we're a PG site, but initials of cursing is fine. Like, okay. Uh, well, how, however, however, well, you're right because when people tweet me directly, almost yeah. all the time they will get something back from me. Absolutely, absolutely. And how much trouble is it for us? We're both reasonably busy people, but yeah. I think, like me, you probably respond to almost every fan who takes the time to write you. I bet you do. Absolutely, absolutely. Dude. Except that one guy. I don't. No, I don't want to talk about him. But let's go on. Um, so now, where can people all this merchandise that you you have out there? Where can people uh, find this? Twitter and look to the left side of Twitter. I have a store now that you can now go to and pick out your merchandise. But I don't make it easy on you. I don't make it where you can just click and buy. Contact me, and the more you buy, the bigger discount you get. You're not going to get a discount if you just do it robotically. So I do it on purpose. It forces you to contact me. It forces us to have interaction with you, which is great. I can sign your merchandise for you if that's what you want, which most of you do. And it also gets you a better deal because the more you buy, the more I give you. And uh, if it doesn't get you a, a cash discount, like, like I do for my foreigners, they say, Kenny, how much does it cost to send a shirt and a hat down here to Australia? Well, it costs about $30, but I, you know, I, I don't want to eat you alive in shipping. So I send them one or two free DVDs worth 30 to 40 Sure, sure. Shipping costs, and let's face it, DVDs don't cost me much at all. And Kenny, you know, I, I do a similar thing where sometimes if a fan uh, writes something to me very complimentary and uh, they'd like something signed, I'll, I'll also send them a uh, um, an audio got, DVD. What's that? There's been fans compliment you? 
uh, one or two, yeah, sure. of those 22,000. But they, I'll send them uh, um, an broke audio up. CD, yeah. I heard your fan club broke up over the holidays. I, I heard rumors the guy died. That's true. That's 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 that old joke where uh, your town is so small that the book was out at the library, so they had a... Uh... All right, so, when, so you fans, if you'd like to keep seeing Kenny Bolin here, part of the deal here is... Yeah, look at the deal. merchandise. And, and normally my merchandise moves very well when I appear on Mr. After Show, so I thank you all for your support. Well, thank you. I haven't been on here in a long time, and Mr. After's been a little slow getting to the paperwork over there, to be honest with you. Well, if you, if you notice that I haven't done a lot of the split screen thing in a long time, and, uh, you know, once I got this information uh, from you, uh, it was a great way to bring you back. So, okay, well, I, 2018. And I'm now on the brand, and I'm over on uh, Podcast One and yeah. the Round Network and the Russo Brand Network, and I've been there for several months now. And I'm proud to announce that we had the biggest merchandise sales year. Not only am I the number one merchandise mover at Collar and Elbow, and you can verify this by writing Rod Hicks or Dean Whitaker or Al Snow. Those are the three principals involved at Collar and Elbow. They'll tell you who the big dog is on Collar and Elbow. We have we have plugged them. No, Al Snow not. is a very Al Snow is a very uh, dear friend. I've known him since he uh, since he first started, and I'm thrilled that he's involved with Collar and Elbow. Oh, we don't like Al Snow. We've never gotten along. I, I, we, we hate each other, as a matter of fact. How can anyone not like Al Snow? Even when Al and I have dinner with each other, it's normally very begrudgingly. We just sit there and we growl at each other for the better part of the, of, of the engagement. Never liked the man, but I said, you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to be a member of Collar and Elbow, and I'm going to elevate Collar and Elbow bigger than ever before, and I'm going to perform a hostile takeover, and I'm going to take over Collar and Elbow from Al Snow, and then I will not only be the number one merch seller, but I'll also be the owner of Collar and Elbow once I force Al Snow out of the deal. That's my goal. That's what I'm looking to do. You people have heard that exclusively here on the That's after chat. Solution. That is a New Year's promise. I will put Al Snow out of Collar and Elbow because I'm taking over his company. If you can't recognize the big dog, then these little chihuahuas need to get out of the fight. Okay, well, Al Snow, uh, as Just you now. know, as you know, Al Snow, we are open to your side of this is as well so you don't like me either so we'll, we'll be clear about that neither one of us have really liked each other he just knew that if he brought me aboard that he'd sell a lot of merchandise and i knew if i came aboard i would eventually steal his company from him so that's part of why we did this well, we're gonna have to get his side of the story well you can get you can get the truth or you can get outside whatever you want to do all right so before we get on to your predictions for 2018 was there one story in the wrestling business that resonated with you that you can't forget for oh, 2017. Absolutely. And, and the great thing about it, and, and you'll testify to this, you and I do not rehearse these shows. No, no it's totally off no. the cuff. I ask, you have no idea what my answer is going to be. No, this is totally off the top of my comb over. Yeah, well, I didn't even realize that I was going to make this Al Snow announcement today about our hatred for each other and, and that I was going to take over his company. Uh, but it's out there now. You know, there's no stopping it now. I've already said it. So, you know, we'll, we'll just play with that as it goes. Yeah, we're going to follow uh, along. What did you ask me? I have forgot what you asked. Is there, is there one story in 2017 that res still resonates with you? You know, the biggest story in wrestling this year, people still talking about it. People wondering if it's a shoot. Is, is it a work? Uh, there's no way that this is real. And even Jerry Lawler didn't know. Jerry Lawler's been my friend for 43 years, and he, he still is not sure if this is a work or a shoot. What are we talking about? The breakup of Jim Cornette and Kenny Bowen after 41 yeah. years. Yeah, so is it a work or a shoot, Kenny Bowen? Well, I can tell you that Jimmy Cornette will be happy to tell you that it is a shoot. And I didn't want to end our friendship but it was forced to because I did not particularly like working with Brian Last. I had my reasons. I explained those reasons to Jimmy. Well, tell and people I, who Brian Last is. A lot of people don't know who that is. Jimmy Cornette's show, and we had had some uh, off disagreements. I wasn't really too fond of the guy before I worked with his show, but just like with me and Al Snow and Collar and Elbow, I agreed to work with him even though I didn't personally like him. Okay. 
uh, and then that hatred kind of grew, expanded, offset when the, the the prince and Maya explained the importance of an EPO. As you know, um, I encouraged uh, Vince Russo to file an EPO on Jimmy Cornette, and I did it for two reasons. Russo was a friend of mine. Well, wait, wait, stop, also, wait, wait, stop for a minute. Tell okay. people, tell people what an EPO is. An EPO is in a protective order in a, uh, signed by a judge, enforced by the police, to protect you, like like. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but Bill Lafter is a very angry and violent man. He's easily irritated, and he's got thugs. And let's say that I piss off... That's not true! Let's oh, I'm sorry. Go, the proof's in the pudding. And let, let, let's say that I I feel endangered by Bill Lafter, like I've felt over the past few years when he wasn't having me on his show. And let's say that I don't feel comfortable with my safety, and I'm worried about Bill Lafter coming from the Great North or wherever the hell he lives coming here and stalking me at my home. Well, what I do is I go down to my local police department and I get with a judge and I say, this Bill After guy's nuts. <laughs> I think he's going to try and kill me and I need some protection. So what they do is they file up the paperwork. They hear my case. A judge decides whether or not Bill After is a nut job and, and, and that my life is in jeopardy. Okay. And then they sign that paperwork and then a sheriff comes and visits Mr. After at his door and says, hey, old man, you better not be bothering Kenny Bowling down here in Little Kentucky or we're going to lock you up. Well, that's what an EPO is. It's did a you, protection did you order. EPO, by the way? Did you get the EPO? Um, actually, it's unsealed. It's in an envelope. I didn't no. know what it was and I didn't want to open it. You didn't open it? No. All right. Well, that's just a protection. You wouldn't pay my airfare for me to stalk you, so I, I'm not yeah. doing it. Get your car and drive. You log a lot of miles, oh, and I have right, 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 right. Anyway, getting back to. Well, you can open it and frame it later if you like, because I, I feel. do that. Had me on your show. Well, that's what an EPO is. So Vince Russo contacted me, and he says, Kenny, I got to do something. The man is threatening my life. He says this is not an idle threat. This is a promise. And Jimmy and I were still very tight friends at the time. And I had some talks with Jimmy. And I said, Jimmy, you got to quit doing this. You can't be threatening the man's life. And you're starting to concern me because now you're just calling me in the middle of the day with all these plans and, 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 and strategic layouts of how you're going to put an end to Vince Russo. And you're starting to concern me. So when Russo asked me for advice, I encouraged him to go ahead and do it. And I said, that way I'm protecting you. Because I don't want Jimmy coming down here killing you, and I don't want Jimmy going to prison for trying to kill you. And I'm not worried about you two fighting each other, because you're both well into your 50s. Jimmy ain't want a real fight in his life. Russo doesn't want to fight, and has made that very clear, so that wasn't going to happen. And then Jimmy's trying to make it into a wrestling thing to where, well, I'm going to have $5,000 on me, and if Russo can whip me, he can have the money. Okay, so now we're doing Memphis wrestling. And then it comes to the part uh, that he doesn't want any cameras there, and he doesn't want anybody filming it, and he don't want any fans around. And, well, basically because he didn't want anybody seeing Russo whip his ass just in case that happened. So, so now I feel I'm protecting Jimmy. I'm protecting Russo. I know Jimmy's going to get mad, uh, but I figure he'll get over it. Well, when I fired Brian last for being the host of my show, then I, then I encouraged the EPO on Russo. Jimmy didn't speak to me for the better part of two or three months. And then... I said, well, i got to have somewhere to work, and I'm not going to be doing Jimmy's show anymore. And, yes, I get some decent viewership over there, but I also get great viewership on your show, David Hero's show, various other shows, my own shows. And then uh, Russo threw me out of bone saying, hey, Kenny, you helped me out when I was in trouble. You encouraged me to do what I didn't have the courage to do myself because I really didn't want to do this. Let me offer you a show on the Russo Brand Network. Let me have you come aboard with us. And, and you can do the bowling alley over there, and then and, and you can come on and do the raw review shows with us, and, and uh, I'll get you on Podcast One, the Realm Network, and the Russo brand, and I'll make up for whatever dollars you're losing with Jimmy Cornette. And that's, well, I didn't have to. I had to do it. I mean, I got I got to feed mouths, too. Well, now Jimmy's really pissed, and, and he hasn't spoken a word to me in seven months. And, of course, he told Jerry Lawler that uh, my son was the cause of all this because uh, – Chris wrote some things that Jimmy didn't care for on Reddit. He didn't call Chris a liar, but he said that it was stuff that the fans didn't need to know. Well, Chris was pissed. He was defending his father. And, uh, and yeah, Jimmy probably didn't want that stuff out there, but Chris did it. He was mad. I've said some things when I was mad. I reached out to Jimmy three or four times to put an end to this. He's elected not to be a part of it. So I was even hoping he'd call me New Year's Day and say, hey, why don't we be adults? And why don't we put an end to this, this crap? 
And uh, I just won't be around you when you're around Russo. You don't be around me when I'm around Brian Last. And we'll go back to being friends the way we did for the first 41 years. You know what's amazing? Okay. What, you know what's amazing here? Is that what's, if there was no social media, that very few people would know that this whole situation even existed. Of course, nobody would know. Yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. So you're on the uh, Realm Network and Podcast One, and yeah. uh, and hopefully, you know, uh, you and Jimmy Cornette can uh, uh, become friends again. We, I know, I know you're open to it. I honestly hope it fixes itself one day. But as long as I'm friends with Russo, I don't think Jimmy will ever be friends with me again. And I'm not going to end my friendship with Russo to satisfy someone else. If you asked me to do the same thing, I wouldn't do it for you either. No, no, I understand. And, and I understand that I've known both of them since the oh. beginning of both their careers. And I still like both of them. And I'm still friends with both of them. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope this clears up for you, Kenny. Word. If you do that, you might you might be off as well. So who knows? Um, well, hopefully not. I, you know, I think the world of both of them. I really the, do. So. Then I was one of the only ones who was friends with both Russo and Cornette. Well, that ended. Yeah. So you, you might be the last one left who's actually... No, I, I certainly hope so. Anyway, so let's now get to... Okay. Um, let's now get... Uh, so that was the big story of 2017. Oh, so, story of all the world. So... I covered that. What's that? Yes, covered it. I didn't hear that, Kenny. The day of the, you remember the day of the Charlotte massacre? They inter, they interrupted that to talk about mine and Jimmy's friendship breaking up on CNN. It's unreal. Uh, so. it's un really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Was, I don't recall that. Yeah, they interrupted the massacre to talk about me and Jimmy breaking up. Uh, that was a huge story. I don't I don't think Fox News covered it, but. <laughs> okay, so Kenny, let's uh, um, let's talk about. 2018 let's in the that. world and in Whoa. the world of pro wrestling. Um, yeah. Let's take a few minutes now and uh, your I'm predictions right. for the world of professional wrestling in 2018. Your first uh, one, please. Go to a commercial break or something, but not even doing um, No commercials now, here on the after chat. Wrestling related. And a lot of these things come to me at the strike of midnight last night. Okay. Uh, so if I've changed my mind about anything I've written down here, I, I, will, I will do it. You can fine-tune it. And if you have questions about it, and we've already covered one of them uh, that, that's on here, but the other one, because that, that was the, the big news, but i got a prediction about that later. Okay. Uh, first thing, the first prediction I'm going to make, and you tell me how you feel about this, is the breakup of the WWE and everything going back to the territories. I'm predicting that's going to happen in 2018. I think... Um that we will see, I don't think we'll see a breakup of the WWE, but in terms of the territories, if some of the territories can get um, decent, real television, mm -hmm. people, because look at New Japan Pro Wrestling on Access TV. They're already, you know, cracking out with people watching them here in the United States. So yep. if, if some of the, in, the territories can get real, decent television, we mm -hmm. could see more people talking about more of the other companies. What kind of viewership are they getting on Access? I haven't seen any numbers out of them I yet. Don't know the, I don't know the numbers. Well, I'll, I'll that up later, and we'll, we'll see. Okay. But the way I'm seeing it is that uh, um, Vince McMahon will make w, w, uh, Raw. That will be the New York Territory. Uh, SmackDown will be run by Triple H. That will be the WCW Territory. Uh, NXT will be... They might hire Jimmy Cornette to run that, and he, he will run... Uh, Florida and do the developmental like he did with OVW. I will not help him this time, by the way, so they may not be as successful if I don't help Jimmy run Florida. And uh, Stephanie uh, will run everything west of Texas, which means she won't have anything to do because they're not going to run wrestling west of uh, uh, San Antonio, Texas. It's just it never was very successful out there since the days of the Cow Palace, and there's just no sense running anything west of Texas. Okay, so now again, yeah. this is Kenny Boland's predictions for 2018. Mm -hmm. Paul Heyman will be given the leftovers, and he will run some form of ECW out of the Philadelphia market. And uh, But they're going to they're have to find a better bingo hall than they had before. But that is how I see this all playing out. 
And uh, as a matter of fact, I hear they're going to find one of the living Von Erics. They will run Texas. And uh, and who was it that used to run uh, um, the Watts family? Uh, we're going to find some, uh, Bill Watts and some of his family, and, and they're going to run uh, Louisiana and Oklahoma. Yeah, so all this going back to the territory days where they're making individual t- – the w- yeah. saying the WWE will take – They'll all be under the WWE umbrella like people were under the National Wrestling Alliance umbrella. They're all going to be under an umbrella, but still, it'll be territorial. Okay. They'll have okay. TV. Right. And uh, as a matter of fact, they're at, they've already, I've got word they've already asked Jerry Jarrett if he would be interested in coming back and running the Memphis territory. Really? And I hear he said yes. Okay. It's the word, it's the word I got. Okay. And it's uh, not confirmed. This is just... Not confirmed. Uh, I think they're going to have Cody Rhodes run Florida. Uh, I've heard that rumor. Cody Rhodes will run Florida. And uh, they're going to get uh, Greg Gagne, a good friend of mine. He's, he's going to run uh, AWA up north. Yeah, I talk to him all the time, and he's still uh, he's still got that excellent uh, he's good. for the business. Yeah. He, he may run the best territory of all of them. He's a good guy. Okay. Let's go to uh, prediction number two. Yeah. Prediction number two now for 2018. Oh, this is a big one. I like this prediction right here. The Cleveland Browns will win the Super Bowl in 2018. Well, no. technically 2019, because they have to win the playoffs in 2018 to advance to the Super Bowl in 2019. I don't Cleveland. follow, Kenny, I don't follow football. Um, uh-huh. so, and over. I know Jerry Lawler would be very happy. Lawler will love this prediction. Yes. Uh, he, might, he might love me for this. But no, they went 0-16 this year. And I, I believe in the due factor, and they're due for a boatload of wins. And I'm predicting they're going to go 16, 15 and 1 next year. They'll lose probably the last game of the season. They're going to run the table in the playoffs. They'll win the Super Bowl in 2019. The Cleveland Browns, you heard it here first. Where, what are uh, my Philadelphia Eagles going to do this year? Uh, they, you, you hadn't heard? Now that they've lost their quarterback, they're thinking of just debunking the whole system. <laughs> Possibly just having Pittsburgh be the only team in Pennsylvania. <clears throat> okay, uh, ne- next next prediction. Uh, that that's, could be a documented fact. You heard it here first. Um, here we go. Baseball prediction. The Seattle Mariners. They're they're gonna they're gonna make it to the playoffs next year. You know why? No. Because Buffalo Bills were the last team that had made the playoffs in any of American sports. They had not made the playoffs until yesterday. They're now in. Now that puts the Mariners as the number one team in the longest drought in playoff history. They get off the snod next year. The Seattle Mariners will make the playoffs. I can't guarantee a World Series, but they will make the playoffs next year, the Seattle Mariners. Okay. Well, drought in baseball. All right. You're going to love this prediction. I love this. I love them all so far. <clears throat> the Cincinnati Reds. You know how much I love the Cincinnati Reds. Very good friends with Dave Miley, the former manager. Um, uh, Barry Larkin, a good friend of mine. Um, Pokey Reese, if you remember him, good friend of mine. Many of the Cincinnati. You follow baseball? No, not not much. Oh, I, the you know, a little bit about everything. I know a little bit about everything. The Cincinnati Reds next year will finish one game out of last place. Never been done in the history of baseball. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> that should lead to somebody's firing, I would think. But the Cincinnati Reds will finish one game out of last place and set an all-time major league record. You heard it here on the after chat. Um, God, here's one. This one kills me. But this is what I see happening. You know I'm a big fan of The Walking Dead. Did you know that? I do know that. Well, I got bad news. The Walking Dead will be canceled for extremely high ratings and over compensated popularity they can't take it anymore the people can't walk down the street they can't they can't go shopping and i hear that every major member of the cast from rick to uh, the guy that rides the motorcycle whose name i should know to negan uh, uh daryl daryl daryl's the motorcycle guy they're all gonna quit they're walking away they they, they they can't get a moment's peace and quiet they have become the elvis presley's of television and they don't want to die in a commode somewhere so they're all walking away. They're all leaving. Going to lead to the cancellation of the show, most popular show in, in, in worldwide history. Hasn't run the longest. And the sad thing is, they just signed an eight-year contract. And uh, so we got eight more years of The Walking Dead. But there's two choices: wrap it up and say we're done because all the top guys are leaving, or 
we go on with a bunch of, uh, of naysayers, and that's kind of what the WWE is doing right now. We're trying to get by without The Rock, without Stone Cold Steve Austin, without The Undertaker, without Shawn Michaels, without John Cena, without Bret Hart, and it's hard. What, what do you say that those are the Walking Dead cast that I just named to you from the WWE? And it's to insert new characters and to move forward. So I think the uh, Walking Dead will learn from the WWE and say, we're not going to do it. We're you, not know, gonna... you know, I've got a trivia uh, fact for you that you probably don't know about The Walking Dead. Oh, what do you got? Actually, let me see if you know the answer. Um, a, a, a legendary WWE Hall of Famer, two-time, mm -hmm. okay. uh, his fiance, her, several of her children were extras in the first and maybe second season of The Walking Dead. Who am I talking about? A two-time WWE Hall of Famer, he yeah. said. Well, I'm only a one-time WWE Hall of Fame mentionee. I have the ring over here set aside, by the way. Have you ever seen the ring? Uh, I have not. Before we're done, I may show you the ring. All right. I've got set aside a WWE Hall of Fame mentionee. But, but, the, but the answer to my trivia question. Two-time Hall of Famer. God. I'm having trouble thinking who that is. There can't be many of them. All right. Well, I'm going to give you the answer now. Yes, sir. It's Ric Flair's fiance Wendy. Two of her children were extras in The oh, Walking Dead. Because they live in Atlanta where it's filmed. Yeah. yeah. So this time, I know you're not lying. I this... never lie to you. Okay. I believe you this time because I certainly hope so. One, make two, and Atlanta and the Flares add up. So I don't think you're lying to me this time. No, I would never lie to you. I always tell, and my fans know that I, I fan. am, I am fan. truthful. Your fan, and that's fan. the guy, that's right? Guy that fight. Well, we'll talk about him later. Over ten thousand. And then there was that lady, and anyway, for so the the next uh, your next prediction. He died, you know. The, the, the fan's gone. Yeah, but it's a terrible not story. Sure. I don't even want to mention it. It's something that people Same. family hasn't been notified yet. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, you need more next, your next prediction. Oh, my, my bad. I thought maybe he's going to help me. Um, this is not necessarily a prediction. You know what it is. Kenny Bolin goes over 1 billion downloads. Wait, no. Wait a minute. That's already happened. Hang on. Mark, man, we move the mic here. Oh. Let's see where he's shuffling to here, people. Check that out, baby. Huh? Look at that. Yeah. Read that to us, please. You read it because you're looking at well, it. Well, it's hard to... Hold on. Let me put you up full screen here. Of course, you're not. Kenny Bolin, congratulations, Kenny Bolin, for 1 billion downloads across 13 years for your podcast, The Bolin Alley. That's The Bolin Club. Wow. Very impressive. Now, where did you get that from? Well, the, that came from my fans down in Australia that, that heard word that I had eclipsed the 1 billion download mark. You didn't do that? You, you didn't make that up yourself? No, 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 no. I swear to God. I swear okay. to God. It came to You're me. you telling me the truth. That I'm telling the truth this time. This, just like time. Okay. this time. This was made to me for me by Chris Doyle down in Australia. See, my fame goes worldwide. I barely left Louisville, Kentucky. And they love me worldwide. I got I got New Year's resolutions from Denmark. Did you get any from Denmark? Um, that's where that guy was from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be getting any from there. I actually, I have a, uh, there's a dear promoter uh, in Australia who promotes boxing and wrestling. His name is Mike Altamera. And uh -huh. uh, there have been negotiations going on for a while to yeah. possibly bring me to uh, uh, bring me to Australia this year to do a my one-man show and a book signing. Want me to go with you? Because a lot of the fans are begging for me to come too. You got it. Maybe we can do a twofer. I'll talk to him about it. Hey, boy. Yeah, I'll talk to him about it. He's a big promoter down there that's a big Kenny Bowen fan. Paul R.J., he works with a couple of companies down there, big Kenny Bowen fan. Well, I've got somebody interested in bringing me down, so I want to talk to him about this. Let's well, get more. Uh, unfortunately, we're almost running out of uh, recording huh. time here on this uh, recording so deal that I have with uh, built into my computer. Um, yeah. So we need to get to okay, some well, more we'll that that, that's already happened. That was a prediction I made in 2017. So scratch the Kenny Bowen billion downloads. President Trump, President Trump will go to jail, uh, but only after he resigns. 
he will resign, and then he's going to go to jail. I'm making that prediction. Okay, okay. That could happen. And then the last prediction, if I can read it, Kenny, Kenny Bowen and Jimmy Cornette will get back together, but only if Vince Russo and Brian Lass die on the same day of natural causes. Whew. That's... But it is, it is a prediction, and it could happen. It could happen. Oh. It could happen. That's my final prediction. I know we're running out of time. We I, thought... are, I want to thank you, by the way, for uh, uh, for sending me the the new information. You notice that it's very crinkled. I've been going over this. Era, that would be great. We'll just honor everything that we've requested there, including the nothing but solid red M and M's in a big uh, two pound pack. Would be great. Well, if you remember, I I get out of this deal that I wrote in that I get a two pound bag of snow caps. Oh, yeah, those are great. Yeah. I Do you know, they're, they're called chocolate nonpareils, and mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a company back east here called Asher Chocolates that makes yeah. the best dark chocolate nonpareils I've ever had in my life. My son's daughter, uh, daughter uh, I'm sorry, uh, my son's mother-in-law just brought us a ton of the best chocolate you get in the world, German chocolate. Have you ever had German chocolate? Chocolate, chocolate. I'm an Easterner. Oh my God! It's the best stuff you ever oh, put yeah, in your yeah, yeah. and they brought the Bolins a ton of it, and you get it at a fraction of the price over there, where it's like four dollars a bar here. Been there, yeah. But you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a confession. Everybody talks about all these great chocolates from mm -hmm. all over the world, and a lot of people. My my daughter says to me, "How can you like this? Just get me a dollar twenty five special dark chocolate Hershey bar, and I'm Those fine." Are those are good. I love but it. I Germany love it. had the chocolate over here at the Dairy Queen and the Dairy Queen ice cream. Oh, I love and that. She said, this crap tastes like Aldi chocolate, which Aldi is a knockoff German supplier store here in, in America. And she was bad-mouthing the Dairy Queen chocolate. She said, you know, th this is this is not up to snuff. You know and what she, makes me laugh, though, about... She barred and spit it out. You know, you know what bothers me about people... Uh, when I was in Italy many years ago on a wrestling tour twice i had chocolate gelato in italy to Ooh. this day i've never tasted anything so good chocolate I, and there are places there are places wait wait yeah. kenny there are places here in the united states that say genuine chocolate gelato doesn't come close i bet not that makes sense that makes sense they lied they lied that's it where can people find you on social media Social media, you can find me at, at Starmaker Bolin. I've now become the king of Twitter since going over there with only 7,300 some odd followers. I'm ruling the world and over there. And verified. Pardon? And verified. Well, and verified. And all my fans are real. That's the difference. You see, you see often with 4 million followers, how many of them are real? Mine are real. Uh, not to bury my good friend Steve Austin, of course. Uh, and I'm supposed to be doing an appearance on his show real soon dedicated to nothing but The Walking Dead. He is going to be so upset when he finds out the inside scoop I've got on Walking Dead being canceled. He's not going to be a happy first here. He might stun me. He might stun me. All right. Well, uh, 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 Backslash Star Record Bowen on Facebook. Any of my merchandise that you want to get, write my inbox. Tell me what you want. The more you buy, the bigger deal, the bigger deal, better deal you get. And we set an all-time merchandise record this year. We sold more merchandise this year than any of the other 13 years previous. And an historic November, December for Christmas broke all records. And, and thanks to the fans for that. And that's a shoot, guys. Yeah. Uh, you guys made me this year and made life a lot easier. That's how I can live in this $1.7 million home well, actually, now. Actually, last year. A fan gave me. I didn't even have to pay for this. Last year, right? Well, yeah, I guess technically it's last year. Yeah, we're January now. It's last year. That's old news. What What do you want your net worth to be in 2018? My net worth? Oh, God, I'm worth billions now. You know that. Just if I didn't have anything, I'd be worth a million dollars. I'm okay. Kenny Bowen. The real million-dollar man. Billion. Billion-dollar man. Million dollar man. Kenny Bowen, thank you. And before we go, I always, as you know, get my, uh, uh, my stuff in here. So is wrestling fixed? I didn't are you, know it was broken. Right? Are you fucking my hat? Uh, I see your hat, and I've also got my book uh, up here. We plug everything. And well, uh, well, what about my book? I probably screwed you, too. You oh, didn't plug I it. loved it. One of my favorite books of all time. I love sure. that book. And in your, in your book's top 25 in my, in my book as well. What's number 24? Pin, pins, Needles, and Dogs. A Jimmy Cornette book. That's a pretty good book. Okay. 
All right. Well, Kenny Bowen, we will uh, um, we will do this uh, again. Fans, please uh, write in uh, here on uh, OneWrestlingVideo.com and on YouTube. Let us know uh, your thoughts on everything uh, Mr. Bolin and I have talked about. And, think about uh, I think I nailed it this year. I think I'm going to go maybe 10 for 10 on those. Yeah, the sound, well, we, we, we will, as they say, time will tell. This is Bill After. And the star maker. Some of the stars you made, Kenny Bolin, just give a... Star. John Cena, Mark Henry, Dolph Ziggler, Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar. The list goes on and on and on until the break of dawn. All right. Bill After, Kenny Bolin, we'll see you at the match.